Many have tried, many have failed, only one has ever succeeded. This is Ninja Warrior of Hell! Hello guys, welcome back to Ninja Warrior of Halo. I'm HuntUnit751. So far, 50 challengers have taken on the first stage, but we've seen many of the competitors struggle to defeat the course. 47 have failed, but 3 have succeeded! First was Alpha Puma, who was able to put all his training to good use and defeat stage 1 with currently the fastest time so far. Then Lethal Lizards, the brother of Master Neuromac, showed that Neuromac is not the only person in the family with jumping skill. Finally, in the last episode we saw a third person succeed. Red Alice 13 finally got the luck she needed and was able to make her way through all of the obstacles and create history by becoming the first woman ever to defeat stage 1 on Ninja Warrior of Halo. She's booked her place in the next stage and today we will see the next 30 challengers take on the course all hoping that they have what it takes to join the three who are already through. The question is, do any of our challengers have what it takes to succeed? Let's head back to stage one start line. Kicking off today's episode is newcomer Aerorath. This guy has made his debut on Smokey Massacre's course in the final uh, Xbox 360 tournament and made it to the second stage. So he is potentially a jumper with good skill and he's been practicing a lot as well for this new course. Let's see if that practice has been put to good use. He's over the sextuple step, which is already better than several newcomers. He's onto the rolling ball. Always a tricky obstacle. We can normally tell who's skilled and who's not by those that beat this obstacle. And he's beaten it. Onto the cross bridge. This has already caused a lot of damage in the tournament so far, but he gets over that as well. Now for the jumping. Can he time the jump right? He goes for it. Hits the trampoline nicely and goes for the low ledge. To plays it safe. Looking at the clock here though, Aerorath is running out of time a little bit. He might want to pick up the pace. He moves on to the loop de loop. New obstacle for this tournament, but of course it's new for him. Everything's new for him. He makes his way in, he's a little bit cautious, up the one side, out the other, and through nicely. Onto the reverse slide, but he's got less than 20 seconds left on the clock. I don't think he's going to make this, even if he beats the obstacle. He goes and he doesn't beat it! Oh, he's out, he's down. First person, this tournament, to fail the reverse fly. Let's take a look at a replay here. You can see from this angle, he didn't give himself enough of a run-up, and as a result, he fell just short. We had our first um, two competitors failed the loop-de-loop -loop in the last episode, and now we've had our first competitor fail the reverse fly. Next up is a returning competitor from Tournament 14. This is Warning Axe 6. Uh, back for his second appearance, he decided... Um, was he invited back? I think he just came back. He came back. Uh, he failed the jump hang in the last tour in the in Tournament 14. Let's see how he does today. Uh, I should point out, guys, uh, today, the day when I'm filming this, I've just been out uh, doing some Ninja Warrior training for Ninja Warrior UK and have uh, busted both of my hands. So if you hear any funny noises, it means I dropped the mic. Anyway, Warning Axe is onto the rolling ball. Oh, he jumps! That might have been a mistake! Oh, he saves it, but he doesn't! Oh, he saved it and then he lost it! And fell short. Beat the rolling ball last time, but not this time. Next up is Pro at Lagging. That could prove to be a bit of a problem on this course. Let's see how he does. He's going for another 6 Oh my goodness! He's going for another 6 2 steps! He goes for the Cowboy Wrangler! Three jump technique. Who needs five steps? You only need three. First person this tournament to successfully pull that technique off. And he's quickly over the rolling ball as well. This guy's clearly in a hurry. Onto the cross bridge, going nicely. Oh no! He takes a bounce and takes a swan dive. We've seen that happen a few times now. Competitors start quickly and then get knocked out by the cross bridge. Next up is Alex J189, one of the ORL drivers that frequently competes on this course. This is his third appearance. Last time out he... I want to say it's a good run, but it wasn't really. He was going so slow on the course that he ended up running out of time on the jump hang. And considering that's only halfway through the course, that's pretty bad. 
But let's see how Alex will do today. As I say, he's an ORL driver, which means he competes frequently in Halo racing leagues. But nothing to do with racing today, it's all about jumping. Well, apart from the cross bridge, obviously. But he's over the rolling ball, and now he's onto the cross bridge, so he should be right at home on this obstacle, even though he failed it on his debut. But who cares? We forget about that. He beat it last time. Oh, he's stuck, though, this time. Is he going to have enough speed to make it? Oh, my goodness me! That was close. That was very, very close by Alex. Perhaps got a bit lucky there. Now for the jump hang. This is where he technically failed last time, even though he did probably beat the obstacle. He just ran out of time on it. And he lands it today. He jumped a bit late there, but got away with it. And once again, Alex is taking his time. Doesn't want to make a silly mistake. But the longer he takes, the more the clock runs down. He's down to 20 seconds, and he's only just hit the loop-de-loop. It is a personal best by Alex, and it looks like lag is really kicking in now. Maybe he was taking some advice from Pro at Lagging. He's also a reverse five. He's only got 10 seconds left. Claxon sounding. It's going to be a t another timeout by Alex, unless he runs out of time on this. He's taking so long on this obstacle. He's not had how to do it. He's out of time. He beat the obstacle anyway. That's funny. Ah, oh dear. He's onto the warped wall, but he's out of time. Oh, well. Can he get up it? No, he can't. Oh, well. It was a good effort, Alex. Another personal best. But once again, for a racer, you're really quite slow. Anyway, following Alex's impressive run, we saw 10 more competitors take on the course, but none of them were able to even come close to matching Alex or Erorath's performance. All of these guys, as I say, were newcomers. Hasboy Walshy got, well, he failed, but then in this other guy, I don't know who he is, I think that's Cam, uh, decided to jump on the course. Mr. Jammy Dodger did the best out of the group, making it to the jump hang, but he couldn't handle it. Then we had our traditional retarded crossbridge failure, as we always do. Uh, Oliver, 23, flipped, did a, almost did a full flip there, that was pretty impressive. Then Zombie Guy, 1529, uh, has suffered a bit of lag, but he saved it, only to then walk off. That was pretty good. The 60th competitor, Ziadric, didn't even get started on the ball and crashed out instantly. Piano Frenzy did the traditional first jump failure. Then the drunk Wookie might have been distracted by the Warhog driving around in the background, but he failed the six tuple steps as well. Uh, then Jack's back got stuck instantly on the cross bridge and couldn't get out of it, and he plummeted into the depths below. Finally, we had Creatify, who also, probably suffering from lag, failed the sex duple steps. Next up is another newcomer. This is Lacan Boy, a fan of the show, making his debut on the course. Let's see how he's going to do. Didn't fail the first jump. Of course he didn't, otherwise he would have been fast forwarded. Moving along nicely, a little bit slow. Not too slow. And he's through in less than 20 seconds. Pretty impressive. Onto the rolling ball. How will he approach this? He's taking his own. Oh god, he almost lost the ball then for a second. That would have been funny. Oh, he has lost the ball now. Can he save it? No, he can't. Oh, Lacan boy. Another rolling ball failure. He beats the obstacle, but you're disqualified. It's over. Now, it's the turn of the first veteran of today's episode. This is ZZ So ZZ, or as we know him, Snozberries, back for his fourth, fourth appearance. I would say 14th. It's his fourth appearance on the course. Uh, he's been to stage two back in tournament 14 when he made it to the metal spin, but in the last tournament he failed the crooked wall on stage one. But there is no crooked wall anymore, so surely Snoz will breeze through the obstacles this time. He is, of course, let's not forget, he's been all the way to the final stage on Smoky Massacre's course. A fantastic achievement, something that's only been achieved by a very few select people. But that's in the past, and now Snoz is looking for new, renewed success on Smoky's course and on this course. Will he get it? He's onto the jump hang, he goes for it, he hits the trampoline nicely, and he also takes the safe option by landing on the lowest ledge. Looking pretty good right now. Less than 40 seconds though. Might want to pick up the pace. He's on to the loop-de-loop. -loop. Can 
he handle this one? Coolly enters it and is nicely out the other side. Now for the reverse fly. How will he handle this one? Oh no! What was that? Oh my! He landed well short of that. What happened there, Snod? Let's take a look at a replay. You can see here he handled the jump hang very nicely. But as he came onto the loop de loop, he went uh, the loop de loop, the reverse fly. He went for it and he crouched. He crouched as he jumped into the trampoline, killing his speed completely. And then he had no chance. And Snaz is once again undone on stage one. Next up is another returning competitor from Tournament 14. This is Walking 5099. He, like Warning Axe, failed the jump hang in Tournament 14. And you might remember this guy for going incredibly fast through the course, and he's clearly still continuing that trend today. Uh, he was li he was literally obsessed with speed in, the, in, uh, in his first appearance, and he's clearly lost none of that desire. Uh, looking at his performance, he jumps very early on the rolling ball, but he gets away with it. He's onto the cross bridge. And he's over that nicely, just like he did in the last tournament. Now for the jump hang. He, this is where he failed last time. Can he do it this time? He hits the trampoline. He gets a short hop and he doesn't make it. He fails the jump hang again. Oh dear, walking. Better luck next time. Next up is McBroskies, another newcomer. And this guy is a very close friend of veteran eye game types. Um, despite that though, he's never competed on this course until today. Game types is watching on in the background, so hopefully McBroskies can do pretty well, otherwise he's going to get ripped by game types probably on how poor he, he does or did. So let's hope he does let's hope he does pretty well. Onto the rolling ball. Nicely over it. Now for the cross bridge. Looks at it. Taking his time a little bit here. Oh, oh no! I thought he had the speed, but he didn't and he fell short. Bad luck, McBroskies. And that now brings us on to our next competitor, who is making his long-awaited return to Ninja Warrior of Halo. The next competitor is one of only seven challengers that is still competing on the course since the first ever Halo Reach tournament. I Spartan Films made his debut all the way back in Tournament 2 and is today making his ninth appearance on the course. He used to run his own Ninja Warrior obstacle course on the 360, but despite his experience with these obstacles and these types of obstacles, he has never defeated the first stage, and in fact on two previous occasions he's failed the very first obstacle. His best performance came in Tournament 3 when he made it to the fifth obstacle, and in his last appearance in Tournament 13, he failed the brand new cross bridge. Now he's back today for the final Xbox 360 tournament. So, the question is, will Spartan have what it takes to defeat the first stage for the first time ever? And produce a real shocker? I Spartan Films. He doesn't compete frequently, um, because obviously this is only his ninth appearance on the course and there's been 16 tournaments, but he's been here since the very beginning, or pretty much the very beginning, um, this including the Halo 3 tournament obviously, um, and he's always been showing his support to the course. But will his lack of practice, since this is his first appearance since tournament 13, will that rustiness show? Taking his time on the rolling ball, didn't jump off, didn't feel confident enough to jump off there. Now he's onto the cross bridge, this is where he failed in his last appearance, and he's publicly announced to me that he hates this obstacle. Let's see if he can do it. Oh yes he can, just about, nicely done. He's onto the jump hang. In all of his appearances on this course, he has never defeated the jump hang. He failed it in tournament 10 and 11, he goes for it, and he lands it! Oh, Spartan lands it! But he's climbing, but look at the time! He's, oh, he slides down! He's got 23 seconds left on the clock! Oh, he slides down even more! Oh, is he even going to beat the jump hang? Come on, Spartan! Yes, he's over now! He beats the jump hang for the first time ever in his career! Now he's onto the loop de loop the klaxon sounding! Does he not know where to go? He looks at it! 
He goes into the main cannon, the clock's gonna run out, he's even worse than Alex, even slower than Alex, and he fails anyway, it's a double fail. Oh well. Bad luck Spartan. Made it to the loop to loop. Next up is one of the competitors who put on one of the best and most surprising performances of the last tournament. This is Killer Demand, the New Zealander who on his debut in the last tournament, he got all the way to the brand new Curtain Cling on stage three. That was such an impressive performance by Killer. Now he's hoping to go even further on his second appearance. Onto the rolling ball. Had no trouble with this in the last tournament and has no trouble again. Well, then again, he had no problems with any of the obstacles last time out over the cross bridge nice and coolly now for the jumping he goes for it he jumps and he hangs nicely done i would also at this point i would like to point out i repeat i'll repeat it he is from new zealand i apologize for all comments i made about him being an australian in the last tournament because uh smoky massacre gave me the wrong information so blame him he's onto the reverse fly and he hang handles it nicely He's on to the warped wall. First person this episode to make it. Oh, he doesn't get up in a one, though. Can he get up on his second attempt? Killer. Yes, he can. Nicely done. 17 seconds left on the clock. He lands the final steps. Killer the man is going to beat stage one again. He's going to go two for two and makes it with 10 seconds to spare. Nicely done by Killer the man. He has shown that his stage one victory in the last tournament on his debut was no fluke. As he once again powered his way through the core, no problems with any of the obstacles really. He was nice and smooth, went at a good pace, handled the jump hang very nicely, didn't have any slip ups, and on a reverse fly, this is how to do it. He went at it with confidence and had enough speed to make it. He's the first person this episode to defeat stage one and he's the fourth person to be advancing to stage two well now it's the turn of two promising newcomers on the course next up is nitro jacks one he's another competitor who's a big fan of the show and is now making his debut on the course will he have as impressive a debut as killer the man had in the last tournament that would be a story onto the rolling ball gets it rolling nicely seems to be in control stays in the middle of it and jumps off nicely onto the cross bridge will he be able to handle this had a little bit of a bounce there but it was fine onto the jump hang i'd also like to point out he's wearing gold armor because it's the best armor in the whole world he handles the jump hang nicely oh but he missed the jump there oh that was close he recovers. Oh, he missed another one. Come on, Nitro Jax. Sloppiness starting to show now. He's onto the loop de loop. Can he get over there? Yes, he can. Very nicely done. Onto the reverse fly. Killer just beat it. Can Nitro Jax beat it? Yes, he can. Nicely done. Very. Got really far there, actually. Onto the warped wall. Goes at it. Oh, I thought he was going to get it on that first attempt, but he didn't. Second attempt, he's going to need to get it now, and he doesn't. Oh, no, Nitro. He's got 10 seconds as the Glaxon sounds. If he got it on that first attempt, he could have been in with a chance. But now it's ru the warped wall has ruined his run. He Oh, he gets to the top. He gets to the top as the clock hits zero. I guess that sort of counts as a warped wall fail, does it? I mean, it sort of counts as a warped wall clear as well. Oh well, we're going to count it as a walked wall fail. Bad luck, Nitro Jax. He sees the finish line, but he won't be moving on. Now for the other of the two of the promising newcomers. This is Resident Kong 121. Like Nitro Jax, uh, he's a friend of Nitro Jax. Um, that he's been looking to compete on this course, and now finally gets to make his debut. Uh, he said his gamer tag is based off of um, the two his two favourite games ever, Resident Evil and Donkey Kong. Hence Resident Kong, apparently. But let's see if he has the skills to defeat Stage One. Onto the cross bridge, nicely over it. 
onto the jumpang. This hasn't caused too many problems in today's episode. Can resident handle it? Yes, he can. I almost forgot his name for a second then. He's moving quite nicely. If you're looking at the time, he's got a decent amount of time left. He's onto the loop to loop, goes right into it, out the other side, and makes it nicely. Onto the reverse fly. Mr. Jump there. Let's hope that doesn't cost him. He goes, and he also makes it very nicely. Onto the water wall. This is when Nitrojax just failed. Can Resident Kong handle it? Yes, he can! Oh, he sh bounced his way up that very nicely. Looked like a really low jump, but he made it work. He's onto the final steps, and looks like Resident Kong is going to beat Stage 1 on his debut! 10.7 seconds left on the clock, and his success now means for the 10th tournament in a row, we will be having at least one newcomer move on to Stage 2. Very well done by Resident Kong. He just watched as his friend Nitro Jacks fail Stage 1, but that didn't put him off. He still went at the stage with real confidence and really good pace. No slip-ups, made it up the water wall first time. As you can see here, it was a pretty low jump, but he still was able to get the crouch and make it. And now Resident Kong, the newcomer, will be moving on to Stage 2. Despite seeing two clears out of the last three runs, the next five competitors didn't fare any better. We had Partycats12, who tried to do the pro at lagging technique, but didn't make it work. Shotgun Crazy did pretretty well, but failed the loop-de-loop. -loop. Wolf8123 uh, was sent packing on the rolling ball. Or maybe that was sent howling. Then I jump, I spin, failed, ironically failed an obstacle with jump in its name, the jump hang. And finally, Web Ionic. Uh, decided he didn't really like the first step, so he'd jump over it. That leaves us with three competitors to go now. Next up is Adam MC66. Like Alex, he is an ORL driver. He competes in Halo Racing League, and he is also making his third appearance. His first appearance, he failed the rolling ball, but on, in the last tournament, he made a massive improvement by getting all the way to the warped wall. He found an actual obstacle you're supposed to time out on. But now he's back, and after that impressive performance in the last tournament, he could be have an outside chance of beating Stage 1 in this tournament. Handles the rolling ball nicely, he shows he's put that first failure behind him. Onto the cross bridge, gets over that as well. A little bit close getting off there, but he's fine. Now for the jump hang. Goes for this. He jumps. Oh, a little bit of lag and it costs him! Oh, Adam! Another competitor who made it to the warped wall in the last tournament that fails the jump hang in this one. Next up is Shadier Degree 2 another newcomer. Um, and another competitor who is a big fan of the show, finally making his debut. He's been sending, he's been sending me messages asking to compete, and so now he gets his chance. He's over the first obstacle pretty quickly. Like I say guys, if you can get over the sex duper steps in less than 20 seconds, then you could be setting a very good pace and very good time potentially. He's onto the cross bridge. Well, of course, obviously, if you go fast enough through the rest of the obstacles, I mean. Very quickly through the cross bridge there, actually. Onto the jump hang. Does he have the skills to handle this? He jumps pretty early, but he plays it smart and takes the lower option. He goes underneath as well. What is it with, it's just like Neuromac, everyone's seen that Neuromac has the confidence to go underneath and now other people want to go underneath as well, it's crazy, it's crazy. It's onto the loop-de-loop. -loop. We've just seen that this obstacle can be failed, and not by Shadier though. Onto the reverse fly, oh did he give himself another run up there? Yes he did, just about. He's onto the warped wall, this is looking like another impressive newcomer performance. He doesn't get up the water wall first time though. Is this going to be another Nitro Jax? Oh no it isn't, it's going to be a Resident Kong! Maybe, hopefully, as long as he doesn't fail the final steps here. No he doesn't! 10 seconds, the cracks and sounds, but it looks like Shady Degree is going to spring jump his way to victory with 6.5 seconds left on the clock. Another newcomer defeats Stage 1. For the 10th tournament in a row, we will have at least one newcomer moving on to Stage 2. Two. And for the fifth tournament in a row, we're going to have at least two newcomers moving on to stage two. 
shadier degree made it look just as easy as Resident Kong did. Even having the confidence to go underneath the jump hang and make his way through that way. Initially it looked like he didn't give himself enough of a run up on the reverse fly, but he still made it. Needed two attempts at the warped wall, but he still had enough time in hand. And as we can see here, uh, I'm not sure who that is. Is that Vulcan? I'm not sure. Some guy watching on in the background and very happy that Shady Degree cleared. Oh, we've also got Slender Man watching on, looking by that all grey armour. Newcomer, uh, sorry, Mr. Random and Slender Man celebrating Shady Degree's success. Congratulations to him. He is moving on to stage two. And with that, we've, mo we've come on to the final run of today's episode. And it's now the turn of one of the most experienced competitors of all time. The final competitor of today's episode is iGameTypes. He's one of the most experienced competitors of all time on Ninja Warrior of Halo and is today making his 14th appearance on the course. He's also proven to be one of the most consistent and most successful because in 13 previous appearances he's beat stage 1 7 times and made it to the third stage twice. The first time was in tournament 6 when he failed the pillar path the la but the second one was in the last tournament when he got all the way to the cliffhanger and produced his best ever performance on the course. Although he would have hoped to have made it to stage 3 a few more times than he has and also he's failed stage 1 6 times in the past Game Types has continuously showed us his skills and abilities and his resilience to always bounce back from a defeat. It's made him one of the top competitors on this course. But now, in, the, in this, the final 360 tournament, will Game Types be able to put on another impressive performance on Stage 1 and go out with a bang? Or will it be ending in a whimper? Game Types. 14 appearances on the course, that makes him the joint most experienced competitor of all time along with Dom, Drago and Re95. Game types, although he hasn't had as much success as some of those other guys in terms of, he's beat stage 1 more times than Dom, but all three of those guys have made it to stage 3 more times than he has. He's determined though, he keeps coming back and he's always determined to do well on this course over the cross bridge nice he's going at a very fast pace at the moment he's on to the jump hang he handles that very nicely he's flying through the course right now as he normally does ever since tournament for the last three tournaments actually he's flown through stage one um albeit in tournament 14 he ended up failing the last obstacle through the loop de loop very nicely reverse fly is this going to cause him any problems no it isn't of course it's not it's game types he's on to the warped wall He's going at it nicely, and he's up it first time! Oh, he's absolutely flown through this course! 60 seconds, and he's already onto the last obstacle. He's climbing, he's spring jumping his way up. He's got so much time left! That is fantastic! What a performance by iGameTypes! 24.5 seconds left on the clock. That is by far and away the fastest time so far. He was pretty unlucky, but he just missed, he just missed out on getting the fastest time in the last tournament when he was beaten by Ree's uh, time. I would be very surprised if anyone beats that time this time round. said time too many times there. Oh, <laughs> um, Game Types did really well as you can see here. Flew through the sex tuple steps and the rolling ball and you could tell instantly that he was determined to put on, put on another fast run. Flew through every single obstacle, no problems at all, and once again for the eighth time in his career, Game Types is moving on to stage two. And with that, we've come to the end of today's episode. It now means 80 challengers have taken on the first stage, but things weren't looking good at one point as uh, Red Alice 13 success was the only clear out of 39 attempts at one stage in the episode with the first 19 competitors all failing but th the final group of competitors turned it around as four of the last 11 managed to succeed first was Killer the Man who was looking to show that his impressive newcomer performance in the last tournament was no fluke 
Then we had two newcomers, Resident Kong and Shady Degree, who both put on very impressive debut runs. Finally, from the inexperienced to one of the most experienced competitors of all time, Game Types once again showed us how it's done as he flew through every single obstacle with no problems at all to post the fastest time so far in Stage 1. It now means we have seven competitors moving on to Stage 2 so far, but we still have 20 competitors left to run. Next time, the final ever episode of Stage 1 on the Xbox 360. 20 challengers remain. Amongst them are some of the best competitors of all time on Ninja Warrior of Halo. How many of these top veterans will have what it take, takes to defeat Stage 1 for one last time on the 360 and move on to Stage 2 and continue their quest for ultimate glory? I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode and you'll be back next time for the final episode of Stage 1. Until then, like, comment and subscribe and I will see you guys next time when my hands are not so destroyed. Until then, I've been an injured Hunter Unit 751. Goodbye.